You may have heard some people claim that Israel is an apartheid state. Let's examine this accusation. Apartheid, an Afrikaans word meaning separateness, describes a system of institutionalized racial segregation and discrimination in South Africa from 1948 till 1994. The access of black South Africans to public facilities, housing and employment was restricted by the ruling minority white South Africans, with separate public toilets, buses, beaches and so on. One only has to visit Israel to realize this is far from the case there. But importantly, equality is also enshrined in Israeli law. This began with the 1948 Declaration of Independence, which provided for equal rights to all Israeli citizens, Jewish and Arab alike, with the state promising to uphold the full social and political equality of all its citizens, without distinction of race, creed or sex. In 1992, Israel reaffirmed this pledge with the Basic Law on Human Dignity and Liberty. Israeli Arabs make up 20% of Israel's population. They also take an active part in Israeli life and are represented at every echelon of society, from Arab mayors and military and police commanders to Miss Israel 1999. They are represented in the government and serve as diplomats and in the judiciary, up to the Supreme Court. Israeli Arab Supreme Court Justice Salim Jobran convicted and jailed both former Israeli Prime Minister Olmert and former Israeli President Katsav. In fact, the third largest party elected to the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, is the United Arab List. Blacks living in apartheid South Africa could not vote in national elections, let alone stand for election or actually make it into the parliament. Perhaps it is little wonder that a 2015 poll run by the Palestinian Center for Public Opinion, based in the West Bank, found that over half of Palestinians living in East Jerusalem would rather be citizens of Israel than of a future Palestinian state. Even if we are only to focus on the West Bank and Gaza, this absurd claim cannot bear scrutiny. Israel withdrew unilaterally from Gaza in 2005 and has since had no political or legal influence within the area. The Oslo Accords divided the West Bank into three areas, A, B and C. Area A, where the large majority of Palestinians live, is administered entirely by the PA. It is corrupt and unelected, but it is Palestinian. The PA cooperates to some degree with Israel on security issues, relying on the Israeli military to prevent a Hamas takeover in the West Bank, just as it brutally overthrew Fatah in Gaza in 2006. Area B is civilly administered by the PA, while security remains the responsibility of the IDF. The area has a majority of Palestinians and some Jewish inhabitants. Area C is administrated by Israel and has a majority of Jews and a smaller number of Palestinians. This division is the result of the complexities arising from joint Israeli and Palestinian governance of the West Bank, a disputed territory that is legally and politically unique in the world. Israel's accusers occasionally point to two things to support their claim of apartheid. Again, neither stand up to scrutiny. First. The security barrier. The barrier was built as a result of the Second Intifada of 2000-2005, in which 73 Palestinian suicide bombings carried out from the West Bank killed almost 300 Israelis and injured nearly 2,000, until the completion of the first segment of the barrier in July 2003. After that point, until the end of 2006, there were 12 further attacks, 64 people killed and 445 wounded. The barrier has saved the lives of countless innocent civilians. When thinking about the barrier, most people imagine this. But most don't realize that less than 3% is actually a wall, while the other 97% is a wire fence. The small wall segment is necessary because it protects areas close to a highway where Israeli civilians were being targeted by sniper fire. Sadly, the simple fence could not stop the bullets. Checkpoints are necessary to allow Palestinians the opportunity to enter into Israel. They do not prevent freedom of movement, they enable it, as over 100,000 Palestinians who live in the West Bank choose to commute to Israel to work. The other issue Israel's accusers point towards are the different legal systems in place for Israelis and Palestinians. As Israel has taken upon itself the provisions of the Fourth Geneva Convention, it is required under Article 66 of that convention to establish military courts in the disputed areas of the West Bank. Israel is also prevented from extending its domestic legal system over the Palestinian population of the West Bank 
under Article 43 of the Hague Regulations. This framework requires that Palestinians who commit crimes must be processed through military courts. They cannot be bound by Israeli civilian law because they are not Israeli citizens, pure and simple. The claim of apartheid simply falls apart. The comparison with South Africa is an attempt to smear Israel, but it is also an insult to black South Africans who have suffered under real apartheid. I'm Kiki Hausdorff, and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with the latest JTV content, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe below the video and the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, click the like button and under following, click see first.